What is the difference between a dependent and an independent sample? And why is it important to know the difference? If you want to know the answers, you're at the right place. In order to check out the topics of all our videos, just visit datadep.net. There you will find explanations of all our video topics. Okay, so let's get started with a simple example. Let's say you want to find out if vacations have an influence on the stress level of people. In order to do this, you have created a small online questionnaire on datadep.net, which helps you to measure the stress level of people. By using this questionnaire, you ask people before and after their vacation about their stress level. Now there are two possibilities. Possibility one is you ask people before they go on vacation and then you ask other people after they come back from vacation. In this case, you would have an independent sample because the people you interviewed before the vacation have nothing to do with the people you interviewed after the vacation. The second possibility and also the better one is you interview people before they go on vacation and then you ask the same people again after they return from their vacation. In this case, you would have a dependent sample. So the measured values are always available in pairs. Therefore, if the people have nothing to do with each other, you have an independent sample. If the people you ask before and after are the same, and you therefore have pairs, you call it a dependent sample. So this means you always have a dependent sample if you interview one and the same person at two points in time. For example, once before a certain event and once after a certain event has happened. When we talk about dependent samples, the measured values are always in pairs. The pairs, for example, result from measurement repetitions with the same person. Of course, it's not necessary that it's always a before and after relationship that you want to study. A dependent sample also exists, for example, if you want to test whether a new type of baseball bat has an influence on the result of a baseball game and you let the same people play once with the old and once with the new bat. In this case, the measured values are always available in pairs, so each player has used both bats and therefore there are two measured values for each player. Another example would be if you want to find out whether in a couple, women, for example, do more gardening than men do and you would also have dependent samples. In this case, there would be two measures at a time, but always in pairs and always one woman and one man. Further, of course, it doesn't even have to be about people. You could also investigate whether a lubricant has an influence on the downtime of machines. Then you would have measured values from the machines with the old and then again with the new lubricant which would also be available in pairs. But enough about dependent samples now, let's move on to independent samples. In the case of independent samples, the values come from two or more different groups. For example, if you ask a group of men and a group of women about their income, we have independent samples. In this case, a person from sample one cannot be assigned to a person from the other sample. In the case of independent and dependent samples, it's of course also possible that there are more than two groups of samples. The important thing is that in the case of an independent sample, the individual groups of samples have nothing to do with each other. And in the case of dependent sample, one respondent occurs in all groups. Depending on whether your data comes from a dependent or an independent sample, you need to use different hypothesis tests. If your data are independent, for example, an independent sample's t-test or an analysis of variance 
without repeated measures is used. If your data are dependent, for example, a t-test for dependent samples or an analysis of variance with repeated measures is used. But don't worry about that, DataTab will help you to find the right hypothesis test and I'll show you how to do it right now. Just visit datadep.net and copy your data into this table. And click on this tab. Let's say you've asked people in a questionnaire about salary, gender and location. Now you want to investigate whether gender has an influence on the salary of people. Then you simply click on salary and gender and a t-test for independent samples is automatically calculated. You get the results nicely displayed and the great thing is that DataTab even helps you with the interpretations. If the conditions are not met, you can also calculate the man whitney u test with DataTab. If you click on salary and location, an analysis of variance is automatically calculated. But what if you have a dependent sample? You just copy the data into data tab Let's say your variables are called before and after. Then when you click on the variable before and after, you will automatically get the results of a t-test for dependent samples. How does DataTab know that it is a dependent sample? Usually a row in the sample is a person. And if you now select two metric variables, DataTab assumes that this is a dependent sample. If this is not the case, you only need to click here and the test for independent samples will be calculated. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, just try out DataTab. It's very easy to use. Bye and see you next time.